All right, thank you guys. All right, so yeah, we're with uh, Celeste Cafe. We are a new uh, allergen-friendly um, plant-based cafe opening in North Seattle um, later this summer. Um, we're still working out the grand opening date. Um, cool, so yes, I'm Brandon Rouge. You may uh, recognize me as the Kite Hill guy. Um, I've spent the last like six or seven months um, slinging almond milk, cream cheese, and uh, yogurt. Um, and then this is Birdie, my business partner. Um, you see her uh, slang in some of our tacos that we'll be having at the cafe um, when we open. So yeah, the um, story of Celeste Cafe is actually a story of synchronicity. I'm not sure um, how familiar you guys are with synchronicity, but uh, it's basically when things coincident coincidentally come together. Um, and it goes pretty far back to even f before um, we got to Seattle. I mean, us both being in Seattle is actually um, s the start of it. But yeah, we met at New Tech in October, um, met briefly. Uh, I feel like Ber Birdie kind of brushed me off when we met in uh, October. But um, then in uh, November, we talked again, um, mainly because uh, we were both brought together by our love of Kite Hill. Um, and then once we were talking, we uh, uh, started realized we both um, follow uh, Ralph Smart, this guy right here, he's uh, Infinite Waters on um, Instagram, but it's basically a spiritual teacher. Um, and then talking more, we're both interested in a plant-based diet. She's been vegan for years, I'm um, trying. Um, and then, so we both um, were interested in starting a cafe. Uh, mine is a gluten-free vegan cafe is what I've been working on. She uh, was working on a uh, like a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency focused like tech cafe where it'd be a, a meetup area and like uh, just work workspace for people to work on uh, cryptocurrency products, um, which brought us got us talking about the future of food. Um, and when I was a kid, when I thought of like food in the future, I kind of pictured like little capsules that you would just take um, and be like a steak dinner, and, like you get all your nutrients from a little capsule. You wouldn't really need to eat a full meal. Um, and so that's kind of when I was a kid, and I feel like a lot of people maybe envisioned that as food of the future. Fast forward to today, um, we've got uh, unicorn toast, um, I think was the number one food trend of 2017. Uh, so we've got, yeah, unicorn latte is basically anything you can put food coloring in um, and make it bright colors. Um, along with that, there actually have been a lot of really cool innovations in food tech. Um, mainly our connection um, coming through Kite Hill. Kite Hill makes almond milk, uh, cream cheese, and yogurt. Miyoko's is another cheese company that uses plants. Um, but basically, there's a lot of uh, companies coming out, putting out really good products that are made from plants versus, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you go try the vegan uh, cheese or meat alternative, and it's basically like rubber. Um, so that kind of is uh, one of the, the great benefits of, like, how uh, plant-based food has evolved. Also, um, in 2010, 2017, plant-based delivery options or delivery orders increased by nine, uh, 987%. That figure is uh, from Ireland, um, but uh, just kind of shows how around the world plant-based food options are becoming a more popular thing. Um, as far as our cafe, um, what we are introducing, uh, we're using a lot of um, new uh, technology. We've got an air fryer basically um, cooks food much more efficiently and healthy. Um, we've got a, um, a slow masticating juicer, basically allows, um, keeps all the nutrients uh, in Instant Pot, um, an alkaline water uh, filter, and um, induction cooktops. Um, one of the biggest things that uh, technology has changed about the restaurant industry is food delivery apps. Um, so our model is, largely based on being able to um, do food deliveries without actually having to make the deliveries ourselves. Um, and then uh, digital marketing is also a huge uh, way that uh, plant or um, restaurant 
marketing has changed. So we are going to use uh, geo-located uh, targeting campaigns on both Instagram and Facebook. We're also using Meetup to um, uh, allow people to come and do events at our space. Um, another cool thing, we have a CoinMe um, uh, ATM coming in, and we're uh, so we have a contract, so this summer we'll be um, having our, our CoinMe Bitcoin ATM, and then we're hoping to uh, accept Bitcoin and cryptocurrency payments. Um, if anybody has any uh, um, advice or ways they can connect with us on that, we would appreciate it. Um, all right, so when you think of healthy gluten-free food, um, if you're like me, you probably think of like some plain tofu and uh, broccoli, which is usually not the best. Um, but we are basically going around the world finding the very best plant-based uh, healthy food options and offering just delicious food so that you don't have to think about eating healthy. It's just uh, the food is delicious and it happens to also be gluten-free and vegan. Um, so yeah. Oh, cool. All right, so yeah. Um, how you can help us, we've got our Indiegogo campaign. Um, if you go to CelesteCafe.com, it will link to our um, Indiegogo campaign. Um, and then if you want to send us an email, if you could think of the best thing you've ever eaten at a restaurant um, at uh, um, CelesteCafeMagic at gmail.com, um, we would appreciate just your feedback on uh, ideas on things for us to uh, offer at the cafe. Um, so yeah, next is questions. Um, any questions as far as uh, all right, the cafe goes? Now we're here. What do you think about the Impossible Burger? Um, so I, uh, having, oh, what do I think about the Impossible Burger? Um, so I, um, Kite Hill um, is actually um, kind of a sister company of Impossible Foods. The reason we're not going to have the Impossible Burger, uh, Impossible Burger at Sless Cafes is not gluten-free. Um, it also has GMOs in it. But um, I love the Impossible Burger and products like that. Um, it, it, Impossible Burger is a, um, a plant-based burger made from... Uh, the it's like a protein compound called heme that's been processed um but it's basically a plant-based burger that looks and tastes like a real uh beef burger uh in the back yeah correct Um, so as far as uh, gluten-free goes, um, a lot of people who have um, celiac disease or um, gluten intolerance also um, have an allergy to eggs and dairy. And so for a lot of people who go for gluten-free, specifically um, like cafes or bakeries or something, they're also looking for vegan products. Um, as far as vegan people go... Um, the gluten-free connection is probably not going to be as important to them. Um, but essentially, if we can make the whole cafe gluten-free and make everything um, taste just as good, I don't think it's going to turn any vegan people off um, from eating at the cafe. Cool. Yeah, one more question. We'll go. Um, you were here? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so I would say we're probably not. Um, I mean, honestly, like, I am, I kind of have traveled, like, my whole life, and I, I like taking ideas from everywhere as far as, like, staying true to one, like, cultural, like, type of food. We're not really doing that. Um, but that is a good question, and I, it's probably something we should think about. Thank you.